Hi, and welcome back to First Year Microeconomics. In the past few presentations, we've been looking at the topic of comparative statics, or in other words, how our price predictions change when something else changes in the market. In today's presentation, we're going to summarise the types of changes that you can expect to see. So rather than looking at explicit examples such as Oprah Winfrey talking about mad cow's disease or a change in government policy, we're going to simply summarise the types of changes that you can see in demand or supply curves. Then in the next presentation, we're going to look at multiple changes together and how they affect our predictions about price and our predictions about the quantity that will be traded in a market. So let's start by thinking about changes that affect the demand curve. And in particular, we're going to look at changes that shift the demand curve to the right. So we're interested in changes that mean at any price, after the change, consumers will want to buy more of the relevant product than they did before the change. What could those changes be? Well, one example is the increase in the price of a substitute. So, for example, if wine and beer are substitutes and there is an increase in the price of wine, we would expect that to lead to a rightward shift or an increase in the quantity of beer that people would like to buy at any price for beer. So that the increase in the price of wine will shift the demand for beer where beer is a substitute for wine, it will shift the demand for beer to the right. Alternatively, if there's a decrease in the price of a complement, that will tend to shift demand to the right. So, for example, if butter and bread are complements, consumers tend to have them together, and there's a decrease in the price of bread, then people will tend to have more bread and they'll want to buy more butter to go on the bread. So at any price of butter, the decrease in the price of bread will lead people to want to buy more butter. Or in other words, there will be a rightward shift in the demand curve for butter. Demand will also change if there's a change in income. So for example, if we have a normal good, remember the definition of a normal good is that the amount that people want to buy at any price rises when the person's income rises, then if we have a normal good, by definition, an increase in income means that the demand for the normal good shifts to the right. Similarly, if we have an inferior good, then by definition, a decrease in income will shift the demand curve for the inferior good to the right. As your income goes down, you'll buy more of the inferior good. It might be second-hand clothing, it might be cheap fast food, Whatever it is, given the price of that product, by definition, as your income falls, your demand for the inferior good shifts to the right. And finally, you might have a situation where, for some exogenous reason, there's an increase in people's taste for a particular good. For example, imagine that new medical research shows that eating an apple a day doesn't just keep the doctor away, but it also massively reduces your risk of cancer. Well, it wouldn't surprise us if that medical research meant that people decided that they had an increased desire to buy apples, or in other words, at any price of apples, consumers wanted to buy more apples than before. In other words, the apple demand curve has shifted to the right. Let's now look at what each of these changes, all of which shift the demand curve for a product to the right, do for our prediction about the price of the product and our prediction about the quantity that will be traded. Here is our initial market. It might be the market for apples, it might be the market for beer, it might be the market for secondhand clothes. We've got, as normal, the price on the vertical axis, the quantity on the horizontal axis. We start with our equilibrium where demand and supply intersect and we have a prediction of the price given by P0 and a prediction of a quantity given by Q0. We are going to look at any of the changes that shift the demand curve for the relevant product to the right. Could be that there's the increase in the price of a substitute, 
decrease in the price of a complement. It may be that there's an increase in income if we're talking about a normal good or a decrease in income if we're talking about an inferior good or it simply could be a change of tastes. In each of those situations, the demand for the relevant product is going to shift to the right or in other words, given the price, consumers will want to buy more of a good than they did before the change. So our demand curve has shifted from D0 out to D1. We will move from our initial equilibrium of P0 and Q0, where the demand curve D0 crosses supply. We will move to our new equilibrium, where demand curve D1 crosses the supply curve. That will be a price of P1 and a quantity of Q1. So in other words, each of these changes will lead to a rise in our prediction for the price of a relevant product and a rise in our prediction about the amount of quantity of product that will be traded. So for example, if medical research shows that apples cure cancer, we would expect that to lead to a rise in the price of apples and we would expect that to lead to more apples being traded and consumed by people. Let's now move to our second set of examples where there's a change that shifts the demand curve for a product to the left rather than to the right. Now, they're going to be fairly simple. They're just going to be the reverse of the changes that we looked at in our first set of examples. So, a fall in the price of a substitute will shift demand to the left for example, if beer and wine are substitutes and there's a reduction in the price of wine, then people will tend to switch from beer to wine, or in other words, at any price of beer, people will tend to buy less beer. So the fall in the price of a substitute will shift the demand for beer to the left. Similarly, the rise in the price of a complement will shift demand to the left. A fall in income for a normal good will shift demand to the left. A rise in income for an inferior good will shift demand to the left, or if there's a change of taste so that people don't like that good as much. For example, with regards to cigarettes, as people have become aware of the risks of smoking, there has tended to be a leftward shift in the demand curve for cigarettes. All of these changes will shift demand to the left for the relevant product. What does that do to our comparative static predictions? Again, we start off with our standard diagram for the market with the original equilibrium price of P0 and the initial equilibrium quantity of Q0. Then we introduce our change. The potential changes are listed here over on the left hand side of the graph. Each of them moves the demand curve back to the left. In other words, for any price, consumers will want to buy less of a relevant product after the change than they did before the change. What happens to our equilibrium? Well, our new equilibrium, where demand D1 crosses the supply curve, gives us a price of P1 and a quantity of Q1. In other words, after the change, our prediction about the price of a product will be the price of a product will be lower than in the absence of a change, and there will be less of a product traded than if the change hadn't occurred. So, for example, if there's a reduction in the price of wine and wine and beer are substitutes, then we would expect that reduction in the price of wine to lead to a fall in the demand for beer, which will in turn mean that the price of beer will tend to fall and fewer people will tend to drink beer. Let's now turn our attention to changes that shift the supply curve for a product. And we'll start by thinking about changes that shift the supply curve to the left. In other words, we're going to think about changes such that, from a seller's perspective, given the price of a product, sellers will want to sell less of a product after the change. That's what we mean when we say the supply curve has shifted to the left. What sort of changes are we thinking about? Well, for example, if you produce bread, a major input to bread is wheat, and if the price of wheat goes up, that's going to mean that it's not as profitable to produce bread, or in other words, at any price of bread, you're going to prefer to sell less bread than before. 
So if there's an increase in the price of an input, that will shift the supply curve to the left. A second example is where there's a reduction in technology. We're used to thinking about technology getting better and better, but historically there have been reductions in technology. Not simply that sometimes things get forgotten, but, for example, when a war destroys infrastructure in a country which makes it more difficult to trade, more difficult to produce and transport your goods. So that sort of reduction in technology will tend to shift the supply curve to the left. At any price, sellers aren't going to find it as profitable to produce and sell products because the technology reduction has made it more difficult to get the products to market, for example, and that means that there's a leftward shift in their supply curve. Given the price, they will choose to sell less of a product than before. As normal, to start our analysis of a leftward shift in supply, we focus on our original equilibrium, our initial demand curve D0, our initial supply curve S0, and our initial predictions are a price of P0 and a quantity traded of Q0. We've listed our potential changes here on the left-hand side of our slide, the increase in an input price or a decrease in technology. Either of these will lead to a leftward shift in the supply curve, or in other words, at any price. Originally, sellers would have liked to have sold the number of units given by the supply curve S0, but after the change they want to sell fewer units and that's given by the supply curve S1. That's going to give us our new equilibrium where supply S1 crosses our demand curve D0 and that will be price of P1 and quantity of Q1. So our comparative static result is that an increase in input price or a decrease in technology will tend to raise our predicted price for the relevant product and to decrease our prediction about the amount of that product that will be traded. Finally, let's look at changes that shift the supply curve to the right. These are just the opposite of the set of changes we've just looked at. So for example, if there's a decrease in an input price, that will tend to shift supply to the right. If wheat becomes cheaper, it will become more profitable to supply bread. And so, given the price of bread, more people will want to sell bread. And similarly, if there's an improvement in technology. So, for example, if it becomes easier to produce a product, it becomes easier to distribute it to your customers, then for any given price, sellers will want to sell more of that product than before the change. So, what do these changes do to our predictions about the price of a relevant product and the quantity traded of a relevant product? Again, we start with our standard demand and supply diagram, price on the vertical axis, quantity on the horizontal axis, and our initial equilibrium with a price of P0 and a quantity of Q0 given where the initial demand curve D0 intersects the supply curve S0. And then we introduce our change, which will shift the supply curve to the right. So that after the change, we have a rightward shift in the supply curve, and our new supply curve is given by S1. Our prediction, well, our new predicted price is lower than before, so the change, say a decrease in the input price, will lead to a lower predicted price for the relevant product, and an increase in our predicted quantity. For the relevant product. So now you've seen the variety of ways that we can have a shift in demand or a shift in the supply curve and how those changes affect our predicted price and our predicted quantity. In the next presentation we're going to look at two changes occurring simultaneously. Catch you then.